Tropical Depression 13 and Tropical Depression 14 forming within the last 24 hours, becoming a little bit better organized and expected to become our next two named storms. Thanks for joining us, everybody, here on this special edition of Tracking the Tropics. We've got Ed Bloodsworth joining us from WKRG, chief meteorologist up there. Thanks for joining us, Ed. You know, these storms, we're going to continue to watch them as they make their way through the Caribbean and potentially both of them in the Gulf of Mexico. Not out of the question to be at the same time. I'm very interesting here, but they both have gotten a little bit better organized over the past 24 hours. Obviously, we've been tracking these tropical waves and we're going to continue to track them as they make their way west. Yeah, kind of interesting that this weekend we were just riding off uh, Kyle and Josephine, and then uh, just a couple days later we may have uh, two more named storms. But as we've been uh, kind of uh, talking all season long, that when we got into the second half of August and then through September, this is really the meat of the hurricane season. So it's really no surprise to kind of see this, what was yesterday, a tropical wave train out there. Now yes. these two <laughs> have started to... Uh, develop, uh, but I think we'll start to get some new information here on 14. Looks like hurricane hunters are heading into the system within the next about uh, 15 to 20 minutes. And uh, but it's 13 at this point, Amanda, that it looks like it have some uh, significant impacts, especially for you there in Florida. Yeah. So let's talk about 13 for uh, for a minute here. This particular storm um, formed into a tropical depression last night. So it was the first tropical depression to form of the two. That's why it has a earlier number, the 13 there. It's still east of the Lesser Antilles. You can see kind of the shower and thunderstorm activity associated with it. It has a low level center there, but it just doesn't have those wind speeds, 35 mile per hour sustained there. We need those up to 40 for it to get a name. Again, Laura and Marco are the next two names on the list. Both of the storms expected to be named, but it will just depend on who gets named, who organizes first, who will get that M name and, and, the, and Laura and Marco, the L and the M name first. So uh, we do have tracks with these though. So I'm sure a lot of people have been paying attention to this because there are tracks, two tracks that now lead into the Gulf of Mexico. So the timing on this uh, is going to be crucial and and the location of this is going to be crucial. Right now, the latest National Hurricane Center track has the 13 storm. So again, the farther away storm moving north of the Lesser Antilles. That means that we would see less land interaction and the storm would be able to hold together just a little bit better, especially if it stays north of all of the Caribbean islands. Right now, the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center has it staying a tropical storm through the end of the weekend. By Monday, that's when we'll be talking about the storm possibly in the Cuba, Bahamas, South Florida range, and it does have it strengthening into a category one hurricane. And then this kind of grabs the attention of everyone there with that cone now over the state of Florida and into the Gulf of Mexico right now. Um, the forecast, the official forecast is for it to be a category one storm uh, impacting Florida sometime Monday night and in, into Tuesday. So again, a category one there with maximum winds of 75 miles per hour and models, you know, they're fairly consistent with this storm. They are, they're pretty, they have a pretty good cluster, Ed. Um, yeah. But you know, they have mo wobbled south and north just a little bit. And that is going to make a big difference because as you know, is if this storm moves farther to the south, it's going to be weaker. Yeah, exactly. And that's something that uh, we're going to have to really watch over the next couple of days because it is possible. Again, we always mention you have to pay attention to the entire sort of cone of error. If this were to follow a more southerly track along that cone, as Amanda mentioned, we would have some interaction with Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, and also Cuba. If it follows more centralized uh, track down the middle of that cone, then we would have very little land interaction. And right now the system is is, uh, is actually battling a little bit of dry air on its western side. And that's why, I mean, it certainly is a depression. It has a low level circulation. There's a look at the Saharan uh, air layer that's, uh, very, that's co-located with the depression right now. So over the next couple of days, the system as it moves west, it's going to eventually begin to win out over that dry air and the environment's going to become a bit more favorable. Amanda, what I'm interested in is that this system starts to move north of uh, Hispaniola and into the southern Bahamas. We know water temperature is very warm in that region, but also if you look at kind of the upper level environment, there's going to be a big upper level high centered right on top of this thing. And when you get a tropical system and with an up high up on top of it, that actually produces a fairly 
good environment for these storms to strengthen. And that's why the Hurricane Center uh, now track has sort of modest strengthening over the next about three to four days. But once it approached the Bahamas, uh, we could see this thing start to uh, increase perhaps a little bit of a faster pace as a, the environment will be conducive uh, for some uh, quick development. Yeah, you know, those waters are very warm there and that upper level high would, would allow for that storm to kind of breathe a little bit. Mm -hmm. And the National Hurricane Center actually noted in their latest discussion that they were kind of surprised at the model guidance intensity at how low it was. So they actually mm -hmm. went on the upper end of that intensity. So their latest forecast, again, a category one here, but the intensity forecasts, as we know, um, you know, are sometimes yeah. inaccurate. So we're going to have to pay attention to this one closely. But as you said earlier, Ed, this is something that, you know, is not ex unexpected at this point in the season. Yeah. Mid to late August here, tropical wave train continues. So, all right, let's yeah. let's get a look on tropical depression 14. That formed right. earlier um, earlier this morning. Maximum winds again, 35 miles per hour. This one kind of making its way through the Caribbean. Still west at 18 miles per hour, pretty fast paced here. If it has a chance to slow down some, that's when we think it'll start to get a little bit better organized. But there's definitely some shower and thunderstorm activity associated with it. Yeah. Plenty there. And we also, again, do have a cone with 14 because it is a now tropical depression. And this one catching the eyes of a lot of folks here because it does also head into the Gulf of Mexico. But luckily, it is expected to move over kind of the mountainous terrain of the Yucatan Peninsula, and that will help to keep it on the lower end of the strength side, even weaken it some as it moves over that peninsula. But then... Once again, we sound like a broken record. Gulf waters yeah. are very warm, and we'll be talking about this storm potentially impacting the central and western Gulf of Mexico by late Monday and into early Tuesday morning. Potentially as a tropical storm, we'll be talking about some wind shear associated with this storm because of a upper level trough. And there's kind of a lot of dynamics that go into the strengths of these storms as we get into early and mid next week. Yeah, so with, with this system, you know, th there are a couple of knowns at this point. I think we're really going to get some much better information here. Uh, again, a, a Air Force uh, Reserve Hurricane Hunter aircraft is, should be uh, now moving into the system as we speak. It took off out of uh, Kizo Air Force Base in Biloxi uh, earlier today, so it should be finally be making its way into the system. And this is the first time we're going to have Hurricane Hunter aircraft flying into either one of these systems. And when they uh, release their instrumentation, their drops on, that tends to really help the forecast modeling and gives us a much better idea of the structure. A couple things I'm going to be keeping an eye on with this storm. Again, when does it slow down? And what kind of shape is it in when it slows down? Because that's really going to dictate exactly where, how much of a northerly jog we're going to see out of this. If this is a stronger, more organized system, it would start to feel that uh, more, more the influence of that trough that's in the Gulf right now. And that would actually pull it perhaps some more on the uh, easterly side of this forecast track. If it's a weaker system, then it will likely not feel as strong of an impact. And that's why you'll notice when you see these forecast errors, error cones, they do skew out quite a bit. So you're talking coastal Louisiana, perhaps coastal Mississippi, all the way down into central Mexico. So uh, the Hurricane Center track generally takes us in the more the western Louisiana, Texas range, but still, we just want to know that there is still a large spread of uh, in the model guidance as we move uh, after the storm moves past the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, so this storm is going to be a, an interesting one to watch, but for our viewers, you know, all up and down the Gulf Coast, just know at the very minimum, next week it's going to be a very wet week on the gulf coast yes. uh, for just about everyone because you're going to have deep moisture on the western uh, side of the gulf very high moisture levels on the eastern side of the gulf so you know from florida western tip of florida all the way down through uh, uh texas and central mexico uh, next week is going to be a very very unsettled week at least with the rain that is for sh uh, almost certain at this point but in terms of a landfalling tropical system, how strong these systems are going to be, that is still a bit up in the air at this point, Amanda. Yeah, and we're going to continue to track it. We'll likely have these episodes of Tracking the Tropics every single day at this point heading into the weekend because, you know, two systems coming into the Gulf of Mexico are certainly something to keep our eyes on in mid to late August. But like Ed said, regardless, this moisture, it's headed in our direction. So we're talking about increasing those rain chances. And of course, we're going to keep an eye on those wind speeds. Also out in the tropics, of course, we have um, another tropical wave coming in off the mm -hmm. coast of Africa right now. That 
that one has a medium chance of developing, but a very long ways out with that one. So we're going to keep our eyes on the two, Tropical Depression 13 and Tropical Depression 14, likely becoming Laura and Marco, again, heading into some very warm waters in the Gulf of Mexico. So yeah. we'll continue to keep an eye on this. Ed, do you have anything else that you want your viewers at, um, up in Mobile to kind of keep an eye on? Of course, here yeah. in Tampa, we're going to watch this and watch those yeah, rain you know, chances at, at this point i think it's just a good idea for folks to go ahead and start reviewing their hurricane plans again not to say that it's going to hit any specific area we just don't know that at this point but now is a good time where everyone on the gulf coast south florida uh, they just need to be make sure they're pay close attention to these storms for friday through the weekend because next week as these storms start to get a bit more organized which is what they're expected to do you know should we have tropical storms or possible hurricanes entering the Gulf, you always just want to make sure you are well aware of what your plan is going to be and uh, just make sure you have to go in and just uh, take a good review of that over the next couple of days. I love that because, yeah, this is your fair warning right here. We're talking about these tropical systems heading to us. And one of the things that we hear a lot, you know, after systems move in is that, you know, it came out of nowhere. There was a little warning. This is your warning, everyone. So make sure you keep keep an eye on those kits have everything yep. stocked up and just be ready to go because if it's not this one we still have a couple months of hurricane season to get through so yep. <laughs> all right thanks wkrg's chief meteorologist ed bloodsworth from mobile alabama there he was our guest meteorologist today again we'll have these tracking the tropic tra tracking the tropics episodes daily at least at two o'clock if not a little bit more than that uh for the foreseeable future as these storms get a little bit closer we want to thank all of our viewers from across the country that are watching with us today again we will be back tomorrow. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for watching Tracking the Tropics.